minutes. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. This hearing in the context is being offered or called, and the title of it is just part of an ongoing effort of the radical left to influence the Supreme Court through intimidation. The, the, the decision should have never been leaked, and right now, what's happening here, what the Democrats are doing, is to try and amplify that leak in order to try, it's a last ditch effort to influence this decision. Uh, Ms. Foster, you mentioned in your opening statement something that I think needs to be explored more, and I want to give you a chance to do that. You talked about euphemisms, and could, you didn't really get a chance to discuss some of those euphemisms. I think I know what some of them are, but can you tell us what the euphemistic language is that the radical left uses to describe abortion and, and why they do that? Well, you know, talking about the, the child in the womb, um, unless you're President Biden, um, they use terms like clump of tissue, um, you know, clump of cells, things like that. Um, they don't seem to recognize and admit that it is a child in the womb, um, even when their own president does, um, even when all embryology textbooks, textbooks do, um, even when the vast majority of the American people, um, anyone who's seen an ultrasound can recognize that humanity. I mean, aren't we all just a clump of cells at the end of the day? I mean, that's what life is. We are cells that replicate and divide. And that's what a baby is doing inside of the womb. That, I would say, is life. When cells, you know, multiply on their own without somebody causing that. Um, you know, the other euphemisms that they use to describe the baby in the womb are fetus, pregnancy tissue. This abortion will just... Uh, quietly and uh, remove the pregnancy tissue, they might say. Products Me of conception. Products of conception. Medical waste. I mean, you've already discussed that. They refer to unborn babies as medical waste once they've been aborted. Uh, ending, I find it interesting, the language they use to describe ending the life of an unborn baby. Abortion care? Who's, who's being taken care of there? Birth control? It's, it's actually a consequence of the lack of birth control and reproductive freedom. These are all euphemisms they use for describing the, in, to, the process of ending the life of an unborn baby and abortion clinic. Even the, the name of the leading abortion clinic is deceptive in itself. Planned Parenthood, it's, it's the lack of planning. It's an emergency that's gone on or it's, it's an unplanned thing that's happened, and now they're trying to treat it like an emergency when it should be the birth of a baby. Um, those who would prematurely end the life of their baby are being called patients. Uh, you know, and my body, my choice. I remember when I was young, and before I learned, you know, how babies came about, I thought when they said, my, ba my body, my choice, they were talking about you know, whatever was inside of the woman was part of their body. The baby is not the body of the woman that it's inside of. It's another life. It's not the body of the woman. Uh, so why do you think they use this language? You know, today's hearing has been replete with those um, euphemisms and, and misdirections that I referenced in the opening statement. Um, abortion is a scourge plain and simple. Um, it's a farce that abortion is presented as a solution to anyone's problems, and it's a crime that corporate abortion interests and this kind of euphemism and misdirection hold so much sway over so many, and we have to do better than this because our constitutional democracy is at stake. If abortion solved poverty or improved material conditions, wouldn't we have you know, closed the gap in the last 50 years? Um, but right now, inequality is greater than ever, and wage growth is more stagnant than ever. So please, with the idea that abortion improves equality. Yeah, and I think they're using these words to deceive, because if they actually describe what they were doing, what an abortion causes, that it ends a life, far fewer people would choose that. And so I think they do it to deceive. But I hold out hope that the reason they use this language is some of the people in the abortion industry still have a conscience, that they know that it's wrong, what they're doing is wrong, and they come up with this language to maintain the cognitive dissonance that allows them to end a life while 
at, at the same time knowing that ending a life is morally and ethically wrong. And I yield back the balance of my time. 